Laser versus Hypersonic. America will soon have a reliable shield. Aircraft carriers are the pride of the United States, one of its undisputed embodiments. No other country is even close to having such a number of ships. At that, any American aircraft carrier surpasses any aircraft carrier from any other country in size, other technical characteristics, and military power. Until the early 10s, such American power was difficult to oppose. Computer simulations of the battle invariably showed that the pro-Tiger would suffer enormous unacceptable damage for attempting to destroy an American aircraft carrier. But nothing lasts forever, including military superiority. The development of missile technology and the appearance of hypersonic missiles in China and Russia have questioned the invulnerability of U.S. aircraft carriers. Even there were statements that the aircraft carrier as a type of weapon is obsolete even with modern weapons and is not a floating airfield, but a floating mass grave. Is it really so? And what are the prospects for this type of weaponry? Let's get to the bottom of it. In 2017, the aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford entered service and was called a super aircraft carrier because of its many innovations and, as a result, greatly increased combat capabilities. 100,000 tons of displacement, unlimited range, 90 aircraft on board, including 5th generation fighters F-35B, which thanks to four electromagnetic catapults can make 220 sorties per day. Imagine what such an armada of modern aircraft can do to the enemy troops. But all this splendor is crossed by one figure, 3,800 miles per hour. That's the speed of the Chinese DF-17 hypersonic warhead. It has a range of 1,000 miles. And another Chinese hypersonic missile, the DF-41, circled the globe during a test in July 2021, prompting a senior U.S. Defense Department official to compare the fact to the beginning of the original space race in the 1950s. Then there's the Russian Dagger, with a speed of at least 7,600 miles per hour and a range of 1,250 miles. And the cherry on the cake, all those hypersonic missiles are maneuverable. This, combined with their enormous speeds, makes them invulnerable to modern missile defense systems. The warhead weight of Chinese and Russian missiles is unknown, but experts believe it does not exceed 500 kilograms. You can say that a Tomahawk cruise missile has the same weight as a warhead. A single Tomahawk hit won't destroy an aircraft carrier. First of all, maybe it will, it depends on where it hits. Secondly, the Tomahawk has a speed of 560 miles per hour. That's 13 times less than that of the Dagger. Accordingly, the kinetic energy of the Russian missile will be 13 times larger, i.e. 169 times larger. This enormous energy is demonstrated by the fact that the Russian Dagger could destroy a Ukrainian ammunition depot located in the former Soviet nuclear storage facility in the Carpathian Mountains. And this is dozens of meters of granite. But that's not all. According to intelligence, China and Russia are developing new tactics for the use of anti-ship missiles. Moscow and Beijing are planning to launch more anti-ship missiles during the confrontation at sea than the self-defense systems of the U.S. Navy can repel. That's the point of such a bonsai attack, to make the American fleet use up all its missiles and leave it completely defenseless for future attacks. How to defend against all this? The same super aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford, after all, it's not even so much about the $13 billion in costs, but about the prestige of the country and the 4,500 military personnel that are stationed on this ship. So far, there's only one answer to this challenge, laser weapons. There are a lot of companies in the U.S. working on creating laser weapons. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman Corporation. The work's coordinated by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research and Development Agency of the U.S. Department of Defense, all have achieved some success in this field. So far, the greatest success has been achieved by Lockheed Martin. It's developed the Helios High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, a fiber optic laser based on spectral stacking technology where several individual lasers are combined to form a higher power beam. In 2021, Helios was mounted on the destroyer USS Preble for trial operation. This gave the U.S. Navy the world's only unique combat laser system for real-world testing. Since Lockheed Martin is also supplying the U.S. Navy with the Aegis combat information and control system for destroyers and cruisers, there should be no problem pairing the Helios with the Aegis. So why are lasers today the most realistic defense against today's challenges for ships? because they can protect against hypersonic missiles as well as bonsai attacks. 
The light beam has a speed of nearly 186,400 miles per second, which is almost 90,000 times faster than even the dagger. To him, any Russian and Chinese missile is like standing in the air. No matter how they maneuver, it's enough to point at them without any conviction and press the firing button. Even if the missile is bearing down on a ship at 7,600 miles per hour and is 10 miles away. The time between firing the laser beam and the 10 miles that the beam travels is only 7 inches, so a hit's guaranteed. Now for the bonsai attacks. The number of shots fired by a laser weapon is limited only by the amount of power needed to do so. Considering that the same Gerald R. Ford has two nuclear reactors with a combined capacity of 1,400 megawatts, at the same time, the needs of the ship require 70% of the total capacity, so still about 400 megawatts remain free. They're supposed to be used for laser weapons. Rectors can work continuously for 50 years, therefore laser weapons can fire the same for 50 years. Agree, no missiles will be enough to make use of all the laser ammunition. And most importantly, the cost of firing a laser beam is only a couple of cents. Compare that to the cost of anti-aircraft missiles, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So not only can laser weapons be used to destroy missiles, but also targets as inexpensive as unmanned aerial vehicles. When can we expect laser weapons to appear on aircraft carriers? So far, it's impossible to give an exact date. The developers still have a lot of difficulties to overcome. The main one is to increase the output of the laser beam. Now, the power of the laser installed on the USS Preble destroyer is 60 kilowatts. According to experts, a power of about 500 kilowatts is needed to destroy hypersonic missiles. That's almost 10 times more. After all, such a missile, designed for speeds of 5 to 10 Mach, has powerful thermal protection, which the laser beam should penetrate. Seeing these figures for available and required laser beam power, one would think there's still a long way to go, but it's not. In the middle of January 2023, the company gave the Office of the Deputy Secretary of Defense a sample of the new weapon, the most powerful laser that Lockheed Martin has produced to date. It's five times more powerful than the Helios laser we talked about. That is, the power of the laser beam is already 300 kilowatts. Lockheed Martin has increased the power and efficiency and reduced the weight and volume of continuous wave high-energy lasers, which reduces the risk to future efforts to deploy high-power laser weapon systems says Rick Cordaro, vice president of the company. Laboratory and field tests are expected in late 2023. Yes, the setup is not yet capable of destroying Chinese and Russian hypersonic missiles, but the progress in the development of U.S. laser weapons is impressive. In 2021, 60 kilowatts, and in less than two years, already 300 kilowatts? Therefore, we can expect that the developers will reach the desired power milestone in three to four years. In this case, we can again say that the U.S. adversaries have nothing to counter its 11 aircraft carriers. They will again become virtually invulnerable to any enemy weapons, except nuclear. There's another definite plus in having a laser system on board the ship. More precisely, there are two pluses. First, it not only burns through the hull of enemy missiles, but also blinds all kinds of optical sensors on their homing heads, as well as the optical sensors on the enemy's ship. And since this requires a lot less power than 500 kilowatts, the laser beam can be defocused so that it works like a searchlight, completely covering an enemy missile or ship with its beam. Plus two, the Helios is not only a weapon but also a means of surveillance, which is reflected in this system's name. Rear Admiral Ronald Boxel stated, A lot of people think of lasers as something that shoots, but lasers are also a very good reconnaissance tool. That's a sensor. When you get close to a radar station, the radar capability is objectively degraded. As you get closer to the laser, it only gets better. While it won't be long before the United States has an effective shield against enemy hypersonic missiles, let's be patient and wait. In the meantime, we'll keep you, our viewers, informed of all the interesting news, not only in the field of laser weapons, but of all weapons in general. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up to be viewed by as many viewers as possible. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you soon.